Daisy Diaries. I, I genuinely wanted to... I wanted my podcast to feel like an actual diary, you of know? Course. So it's like now this page is like Suede Brooks. And it's like you I write. I know, I get my little page in the, in the chapter, in the yes. book. Yes, and so when you reached out and you were like, you know, you would love to be part of it. I was like, what? Really? Like, I was, I think I was more flattered than anything. Wait, stop, because you wanted <laughs> me. I was so nervous. I was like, I wonder if Daisy would be down. Like, Because I've been thinking, I've never done a podcast. Yeah. So I've always wanted to, like, kind of tell my story. Because yeah. I feel like... The, my story is always growing. Yeah. And but there's not really a platform where you can go and be vulnerable absolutely and feel not. comfortable, no, right? Which and is, TikTok is so fast and quick. You can't like, and it's I have so, no room there. Yeah, for sure. Which is why I wanted to create my podcast. So I'm like, so people and my friends and my loved ones can feel comfortable to come on absolutely. and tell their story. And do you and do solo chapter. episodes as well? I haven't done a solo episode yet. That could be unique. I... I think the one episode that I did try to film by myself, do you remember that episode, Garrett? It was just very dark and like... Yeah, but sometimes that resonates with like a lot of like young kids, it, the it shit does. that you struggle with. You know? I just think I was like, it was just such a hard, vulnerable, dark topic that I was like, once I watched it back, I was like, fuck, like, you know... This might be too much. It might be too much. Yeah. I'm like, let me slowly, because like more started coming out about my real life. Yeah, you and don't want to drop a bomb when it's like when you're trying to, you know, flourish yeah, for the sure. podcast. So Absolutely. The first two episodes were obviously a lot of information and like telling my truth and stuff like that. So I was like, let me just talk about that first and then slowly, slowly graduate. Start like, right. you know, getting more and more I think that's the best bumble. way to do it because then people for are sure. more comfortable with you. Yeah, you for know? sure. They um, realize like what the vibe is. Yeah, and especially. where you want to go with it. Especially because I feel like you're so mysterious, okay? That's so funny that you say you're that. You're so mysterious, I feel like, to the internet. Because it's like people see you in this lavish, beautiful life, this beautiful girl. And they're like, how does she have this? How is she doing that? But there's so much more to you. There's so much death. Yeah. And I feel like, I just want to get to know Suede. I feel like the audience and the world deserves to know the other side of Suede and I really hope that you feel comfortable and get vulnerable and, you know, we can just kind of bounce off of each other. Absolutely. That's so what I'm, I'm just here for. Very thankful and to I be here. And I love, it's so funny you say that I'm so mysterious because that's like the biggest, and it's so funny because I feel like it's just a wall that I've built up over the years with just the amount of hate and things like that. You just build the a wall internet. up and you yeah. just kind of like shut down and you yeah. tap away from your phone. Yeah. So, Yeah. I feel like this podcast is going to be major, babe. And I'm like, well, I'm super excited. I'm so excited. honored for real. I'm super excited that you're here and I'm very thankful that you're that I'm going to be a part of this journey of this new milestone because I feel like Absolutely. just, just liber liberating yourself and like just telling your story and your truth is it really does help you emotionally internally when I told my truth I was just like I don't care what the world has to say yeah I don't care what you know who's gonna judge me or anything I was like I'm doing this for me and I just want to tell my story and right. it's going to and hope that it resonates with others you exactly know? I think everybody has a story everyone you know? has a story everyone makes mistakes everyone goes through things you know we're yeah. all human beings at the end of the day so cheers to that yeah for real <laughs> like, cheers forever I got you forever cheers girl I'm excited though for real this is this is huge for me I know I can't believe this is your first podcast I feel like you don't ever do interviews or anything on social media really. I know it's so funny because I feel like I'm, I've always been so used to producing my own content and sh controlling everything that goes out yeah. about me yeah but now I've gotten to the point in my career where I'm like I feel like people can resonate with me 10 times more if I just share a little bit more yeah if you're a but little it's bit all more about vulnerable. you know breaking that wall and being vulnerable on the internet it's is terrifying brutal. it's so terrifying because really like being vulnerable I think is the scariest thing ever in this world because some people out there are still not going to like that and they're going to use that as a weakness and they're going to put that in your face and throw it back Absolutely. in your face but I think it's just I think if you have a stronger mentality you have a good support system to where you're like you know when I saw you at um what was that where were we at where you were like babe I was just I was like of leaving course. and you were like at babe you're so strong yeah, like two weeks ago and because, I was like, because I feel like I resonate I think our stories are very similar in the yeah. way that like we both come from YouTube. We both come, that, come from that background of our whole lives being on the internet. Mm -hmm. So when something happens to any of my friends that I'm close with or that I love, yeah. that I see publicly, I'm the like the, <laughs> the first thing I want to do is just squeeze you and you hug were like, you. Baby, because, you're so strong. And I was like, Thank yeah, you. forever. And it's like, like, I I felt like nobody in like our friend circle or like from here knew what was happening. No, no, and it's so crazy. So, I asked everyone, and they were like, "What? What? What?" And I'm like, "This is like." 
a, it was we a need big, to we need to all come yeah. together as like a friend group and unite <laughs> for this you know yeah so i think it was very refreshing and very touching for you to do that and i texted you and i was like thank you so much for being yes for me. babe so and i want for you i've something. always looked up to you like really I've, oh my goodness babe come on sweet i see you as like such a like trendsetter like fucking everything i i think you I have think so much to offer i always to the world. resonated with you just like being able to be unapologetically yourself on thank youtube you. specifically <laughs> thank you i think youtube is the hardest platform to master For and you sure. did it at such a young age which is so impressive you did too I, that's what i'm saying <laughs> like, so the fact you. that i think that we have that solid ground yeah for sure and yeah, if anything happens, to, like I said, with any, any of my friends, I yeah. am the first one to be like, I'm there. I will ride for anybody that I love and care about, you know, no matter what. You're younger than me, but you're almost like the mom of the, like, you have, like, you take that care of the so people funny. around you. Yeah. you. You are like that, and I think it's so beautiful. So, I guess I want to start from your childhood. Yeah. You know, what was your childhood like? What was it like growing up on social media? What was your life like behind social media? Um, kind of just... Where yeah, I mean, start? so I was born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes. I love Vegas. I'll always love Vegas. I had to leave to appreciate it. Mm. But my growing up, I had a great lifestyle, honestly. My parents are in the hair industry. Mm -hmm. They owned a hair salon in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I grew up like kind of in the beauty space. I would go to all the conventions. and That's so cool. So I always loved makeup mm -hmm. and just beauty in general, yeah. hair, fashion, all of it. My mom was like the queen of... She's such All a fashion queen. Yeah. When you post her, I'm like, her outfits? Yeah, <laughs> my mom is the reason that I... I think I do what I do truly because uh -huh. she's the root of all of it. They're like our role models. No, straight up. I would be nowhere without them, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, they're yeah. so important. Yeah. But yeah, born and raised in Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, I moved out at a really young age. So I started making YouTube videos for fun. Yeah. When I was in sixth grade, I was about 12, 12 years old, 12 or 13 years old. I just old. think that sounds absolutely insane it was berserk but like what how did that start like when did you pick up the camera you're like this is what I'm gonna do for fun okay so it basically started when I was in sixth grade I was severely bullied throughout middle school mm -hmm. and it got to a point where I was like I tried committing twice I like hit ultimate low I was really? sitting in my room every day and watching YouTube videos and, and I would sit outlet. and watch Amanda Steele, Stila Babo 9, Aww. Bethany Moda, Maddie Bragg like we all love the Bethany Moda. <laughs> forever <laughs> straight up like that whole era of YouTube I that I was obsessed with it I like consumed it every single day mm -hmm. I was watching all these makeup videos and then I'm like one oh, day yeah, I woke I up it. I'm like yeah if I'm learning all this tricks and like learning all this stuff from from these videos I might as well just like try it myself like why yeah. not I didn't have a camera I didn't have anything I literally had my laptop and I started making videos and I was just like sitting in my room talking about like makeup and hair and like I would go to the so drugstore <laughs> I at one point I was like I don't condone this by the way but I used to like go to CVS and steal like the Maybelline paint pots and like the j <laughs> the NYX the jumbo babe straight up like the, the NYX jumbo, jumbo eye pencil <laughs> don't try me like I would I wanted every color I was just so intrigued by the YouTube culture, and this was like I said, this was before YouTube like was, like was a big. Like, I didn't even huge. know. You, no, I didn't even know they were making money. I didn't even know Bethany. I didn't know she was doing it for no, a living. No, back then it was just like such a. It was so thing. hidden. Yeah. Like no, like it wasn't a thing that you were like breaking bread with these big companies. Like <laughs> yeah. that was not. So I think when so I kept it. I kept like a, a like secret. A secret. Yeah, for like a year and a half. How were from you my to... parents? And it's crazy because I think. My YouTube channel like slowly grew, uh -huh. and it took me a year to get a thousand subscribers, which really? is like crazy. Like that takes it. Like now people are getting now, eight million off so rip. Fast. Like, it's ridiculous. It like is. you go viral, and it, back then it really wasn't kind of like that. It was such a hard. You had to really put in work to Bang, grow your like, platform. At least you were you were posting three times a week. Yeah, you know. So, yeah, I started that, and I don't know. My YouTube just kind of like took off, and I wasn't telling. I, my parents still didn't know. None of my like schoolmates had known yet. And then one day, some girl in middle school started chirping that I had a YouTube channel. And the it's whole always school, those hating oh, ass right? Bitches, right? Like, I'm like, come on, you. And it was, the, you, I hate that it was the captain of the cheer team, too. <laughs> the like, girl. And I, I was hating on straight you. up. I'm like, and I wanted to be the captain so bad. <laughs> But and now she wanted to be you. No, straight up. And yeah. it's funny because because she has a YouTube channel now. Oh, and I'm like, hmm. the irony. Right, unique. Mm. 
<laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so I, I hid it from my parents, and then one day I'm in Target. This little girl comes up to me. I'm with my mother and my father. And this little girl goes, oh, my God, I love your videos. Obviously, off rip, they're like, when they think videos, they're thinking it's like some crazy something, shit, Yeah, something right? dark. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, mom, dad. I'm literally in the middle of Target. We have two, like, big things of groceries. I'm like, guys, like, I make these, like, little videos on, like, YouTube on, like, makeup and hair. My mom, and obviously they loved it because they were like, oh, my God, you found something that you genuinely love. Yeah. You're out of your episode. I was about to say, I think it was almost maybe refreshing to them, maybe because you were in a, such a dark place. So Yeah, so they saw, like, like, oh, my God, this was her escape. Like, this is something that she, that's making her happy. I would mm -hmm. sit in my room and edit on iMovie for hours. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I finally, up. I remember I got enough money to make, to get Final Cut Pro. Oh, we love Final Cut Pro. Babe, and when I got Final <laughs> Cut Pro, everything you were changed. Like game oh, over oh, for you bitches. Over. I was like, you guys have no <laughs> idea what's coming. So it was just, I, I don't know. I just grew up with older siblings as well. Mm -hmm. And I always loved like photography, videography, camera equipment. I've always just been like so obsessed with those mm -hmm. things. So I think it was kind of a given what you I do. You were just meant to do yeah, that. Yeah. You know, and I, like I said, you. I love what I do. I wouldn't change it for the world. Like the fact that I get to work with amazing brands that I've always like consumed. Yeah. As a younger kid going yeah. into Sephora, going into, mm -hmm. please, Barney's, Neiman's, you tell, you name it. Yeah. Like the fact that I'm able to work with them is such a dream because I love making video content. I love sharing my life. Yeah. But when you're able to work with brands that you genuinely like never thought that it's a like such years. a, it, it almost feels like a fever dream because you're like, oh my gosh, I started this because I was trying to escape from that and now it's become a reality. Absolutely. I, I can relate to you because I had started doing YouTube because I genuinely thought that I was going to go to college and university. So I worked my ass off in high school. And then right. when I found out because of my legal status, I wasn't able to afford. So when you are. Wait, are you not a U.S. citizen? No, I'm illegal as fuck. What? Yes. When I was nine, like I remember everything was you so dramatic, it. and it was like took me hours to cross, and it was just by myself. I wasn't with my you mom. Were with like, anybody? No, no, no. So I was like a coyote that the crossed chose, me. The chose. <laughs> so, but because I was in, you know, I worked my ass off in high school, and I was in all these sports and like all these extracurricular like programs. Yeah, activities. just like, trying to bust your ass, just exactly. trying to make a move. And right. they were like, "Well, because you are an illegal immigrant, you're gonna have to pay double." I was broke as fuck. I had no money to pay for college. Girl. It didn't matter the scholarships that I had. It wouldn't even fund the first year. So I got super depressed. I'm like, oh my God, I did all this hard work for nothing. And my and escape was, your... was makeup. And yeah. it was, and then it was YouTube. And so then I was like, okay, right. I love this. This is what was distracting me from like getting depressed and all that. So then that's where like, I think it's so beautiful that you as well, I kind of wanted to I had, Talk. I'm sorry, but I had no idea that you went through that. That is like, <laughs> I think a lot of, I forget <laughs> about how honored I am to be like a U.S. citizen and like how blessed I am, not honored, oh. but like how blessed and grateful yeah. I am. And I sometimes forget that some people, there's like, people, like there's people out there that yeah. go through such trauma. Yeah. At such a young age, girl. <laughs> oh my God. So it, if you don't mind me, we can cut this, but no, like, no, where okay. is it? Where are you at now? Do you have a, is it on green card? Or I still have nothing. Do you want to get married? Or what are, <laughs> I have know? nothing. We can, we can talk about this. It's, I made a whole YouTube video about me crossing the board and that's what kind of, shut up. It was like, girl, yeah, I got to watch it. This is cool. Oh my it was, I literally went full into detail about how I crossed the board. And I think that's what really built my community around me and like my fan base. It was like, people who went through the same thing related to it Absolutely. i just wanted people to know that like hey like you know i'm successful and i've been able to overcome and this and like are. exactly Absolutely. i think it's such a I think it's such a beautiful story unfortunately still i don't have i girl i would have been in europe with you i would have been everywhere around the world leave the US? no i i can i can leave the u.s but i just can't come back in so i just travel to puerto rico <laughs> that's oh it that's goodness. all i can do um i would like do you have think in the future isn't what how what's the process? Do you like have to get a sponsor? I heard there's a gift to get a sponsor, correct? Um, I just think my situation is a little bit different right. because I'm in the limelight. Like, but so what? You crossed, then went back. So I came here. Yes, with I, your family. I, I came here when I was super young. I don't remember that. But then every summer, my cousins. I'm like I was the only one that didn't have papers. So then my cousins would go to Mexico, and I told them I was like, I want to go to Mexico. And of she's course. like, If you go, you're gonna have to cross the border back. I was nine. I didn't know what that meant. And at the time, like things were just the relationship with my mom and I were different. So yeah. she just like was like, Okay, go. So when it was time to come back, right. my grandma was like 
you have to cross with these coyotes, aka like these strange, these random men. Yeah, right. So then she drops me off at this random house. And she's like, well, these are the people that are going to take care of you. And I was crying. I was like, no, like, don't leave me. I'll stay in Mexico. I'll go right. to school here. I was like, no. And where was and this in Mexico? It was in Ojuelo, Jalisco. It's like, okay. it's not even a well-known place. But long story short, I end up crossing with these strangers. It was like right. a big group of us at first. And then like immigration came. Were you Half like the of only us were like, like younger? I like, was the only nine-year-old. Everyone dude, else was like 30, 40. There was a pregnant lady with us. You write this shit <laughs> straight it, up. It was like a, it was so traumatizing i kid you know i remember i came back on u.s soil and i was like i did traumatized it. terrified and i was so mad at my mom at the time but like now i look back at it and i'm like i this i would not be the person that i am today without that experience so i'm very of thankful course. for the experience um i feel the same way with my situation and if you don't mind me asking yeah, what led you to be in that dark space where you wanted to take your own yeah life, so you know? um it was actually close wait go like this real quick you have hair. oh my god thank you yeah. babe um, so yeah, I was like severely bullied, um, in middle school by mm -hmm. a family friend of ours and they were like our neighbors. So they lived right across the street from us and we would go on family vacations with this family. Okay. Um, they had two daughters uh -huh. and no, they had, they had four kids, but the two daughters were twins mm -hmm. and they were our best friends growing up. Yeah. One day, the mom just like flipped a switch and went berserk. She tried running me over with her car. What? Like, went crazy. But why? I had to go like, the, I think it was like jealousy. I think it had to do with, like, maybe the she main was thing was, you to, like, I think the daughters, like, they would accuse me of copying them. But, like, at the end of the day, we were all shopping at PacSun, Brandy Melville, <laughs> and Abercrombie Kids. Those are the only three stores in our gallery yeah. mall. Uh -huh. And it got to it, like, it got to the point where the mom was, like, getting aggressive. And one day I was going to get my mail, and she literally tried to run me over. That's insane. And at that insane. point, my mom was like, oh. We're not like, safe. We're, like, yeah, they're going down. Like, yeah. this is the final straw. And I think it affected my whole family. Like it, my my situation really affected my whole family because they were so close to us. Yeah. Um. I don't hold any grudge against mm -hmm. them. I actually see them all the time in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and I have not honestly I have nothing but love for them because yeah. I wouldn't be where I am today without them. Mm -hmm. And I've I've kind of spoken about this story before, but yeah, it was just these two twin girls that dragged me and Tana Mojo through the mud when we were younger and what the fuck yeah it was it was really brutal I and they mean, made your life like a living hell or do yeah. you feel like you internalized everything that happened? I did I mean I think they really hit a low with me mm. and then once I hit that low and I was found YouTube and I started like realizing oh there's like something bigger and better out yeah. there for me like it's not the end of the world yeah it's not the end of the but world but I think at that age we think that it is the end of the absolutely. world absolutely we think that there's nothing more and we're super young and like absolutely I think also like when I started traveling too mm -hmm. like growing up I didn't really travel outside of Vegas and we would go to like California you would think that so, that's just like yeah once like I started doing the YouTube and I started going to like Playlist Live, IMAX, BeautyCon, VidCon, like... Wait, I just said BitCon, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, that's probably one of them <laughs> now, like too, babe. BeautyCon, BeautyCon, yeah, yeah. I mean, once I started, like, seeing that there was an actual community out there mm -hmm. for girls like yeah. us, I was like, oh, please, fuck I them. got this. Yeah, 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 for sure. But, I mean... It's it's still hard to go through that as a young kid, like when For sure. and especially that was like when Instagram came out, like not Ooh. Instagram came out, but like people it, were like posting and like mean and nasty, and people were actually saying like girls my age were going on their Instagram, like using their usernames, like it was bold back in the it, day. It was like they didn't care to make a <laughs> fake profile. Yeah, there was no, no fake profile back then. Frames. It was like straight cutthroat. Yeah. And so I think that definitely affected me a lot. But like I said, if it didn't happen, I wouldn't be where I am today. And yeah. Like I said, I see them all the time. I have no grudge. They were young. We were all young. But yeah. I think the mom is really where um She was in that's the where I still struggle with because I see her she was I see her sometimes. Yeah. And it's hard because because you were because I was like her second daughter. Mm. It was like one of those, you know. Yeah. So I guess it's just about not forgiving and forgetting, but I think you can forgive, but just never forget what was done. Exactly. You just put a boundary there. You That's know? exactly like, what it is. It's like yeah. I just like created a wedge and I keep arms length. Yeah, I'll forever for sure. have love for um the daughters yeah like the daughters and just the whole family in general like we were on every family vacation you can imagine yeah. together so going through that as it at that age was really brutal but like I said it changed it changed it was for the better I it feel really like, was and I think at the time it seems like 
why is this happening to me? But now that we're older, we look back at it and like, it really does shift and oh mold us goodness. to be the people like that we are. It was like for a reason. Like people really say like everything happens for a reason. I genuinely think it, Straight it does up. happen. Sometimes I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Like it may seem like the end of the world, but then you're like, when things are better, you're like, wow, I would not be where I am today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's crazy out here. I, I didn't know that. I, I think that's so crazy. And then now fast forward to here, for those that don't know, we've been knowing each other for... Over a decade. <laughs> I was just talking. We were just talking. We were just talking about this before we started filming. Um, I met Daisy at, I think it was 2014 or 2013 BeautyCon. It was such a long time And ago. that's when like the meet and greets, babe, Daisy Marquez meet and greets <laughs> at BeautyCon. Are like, you kidding? No, no, no. It was flooded. <laughs> like, Stop. and no, she had like the exclusive ones because most of the time, you know how they would group like... They oh, you, group, they would just show up and then they would like be like five little. or six influencers together for one meetup. So then a bunch of girls would come to meet all the girls. <laughs> Daisy Marquez exclusive <laughs> meet and greet, Stop. babe. Stop. That's funny. No, for real. Like just, you, you put a stamp on YouTube forever. I think. Thank you. I think what you've achieved. And I feel like everybody that has that used that platform, like we all built a community together and absolutely. like, and it's so hard to grow on YouTube. It really is. Well, that's is. the thing I was about to say, once you get big on YouTube, like you, you blow up on everything. You have a timestamp forever. I like, think because people know your personality. They know what toothpaste you're using. They know what it's face like such a, are. like, it, there's so many things that you don't, they realize especially like now with like tiktok and everything it's like so like Man, quick zip, quick quick zip, the zip, time zip, span zip. is if, like if you can lock in and into a creator for 30 minutes on youtube it's like that's hard i know I, there's like there's like maybe on one hand i can count you no, know yeah. what i'm saying so if you can do that it's but and you know what's so crazy too is you were below i mean you're still blowing up on tiktok like i yeah. remember seeing your videos and i was like oh my god you're hey guys get ready with me and i was like oh my gosh like she's fucking killing it you're still killing it i think that your fashion sense is just like what i look forward to obviously oh, looking at you or like meeting you but you are such a trendsetter suede you like I, I i fucking know so we went to it was mal neil's birthday yes and oh you by the way such a fun party <laughs> it was honestly the funnest party ever i kid you not it was so much fun oh suede classic brunch. no you pull up with this blue Loe sweater. What? Oh yes, yeah, and a major white, by the way. I remember it with the white skirt and your hair slicked back, and I was like, ah, oh, she's just such a fucking like bad bitch. Like anywhere I go, I could just expect you to show the fuck up, and I oh, love that goodness. about you. I love Thank the way you. you dress. I love the way you carry yourself. Thank you. And um, I've always played dress up when I was younger. I had this big dress up in. Really? That yeah, like oh my gosh, in my playroom downstairs, growing up, we had this big dress up in, and I would always just put big tutus on I would raid my mom's jewelry closet and just like always dress up I've always had a love for fashion and I think once I started um like really being able to make an income where I can buy pieces that I genuinely love and will like pass down to my children yeah was when I think the game changed because I've always like I said I've always loved clothing I've always loved shoes and bags it's yeah. been my thing but yeah, I never had I was and I never had the access to it. Mm. And once you get the access to like things that you genuinely love and it's care about, over, it's game over. It's game over. Yeah, it really straight is. up. Um, but thank you for that because I, I really course. appreciate that. I've always loved fashion, and yeah, like you said, the TikTok stuff. Um, I kind of want to go back to that because I feel like you kind of shied away from it. I feel yeah, like you absolutely. Were like super consistent with it and then at some point you kind of were like oh and everyone's like we're sweet i yeah. miss your content i think um i tiktok is a very hard app for me to i don't want to say master but when i first downloaded tiktok i was like okay so this is the new short form video app mm -hmm. i'm gonna mind you i come we come from youtube backgrounds where it's we're like we're putting out videos. a movie a week yeah and so I was like, okay, I, I kept scrolling on the For You page. I'm trying to like get a hold of this app, what mm -hmm. it's what it's about. Yeah. And I see, um, I just kept on seeing a lot of makeup and fashion content. So I'm like, okay, if Get Ready With Me's do really well on YouTube, I used to watch Outfit of the Weeks, Get Ready With Me's, and like back try to on school videos and, and, like and try on that, hauls. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like, and like simple makeup tutorials. That's what I used to watch on YouTube. So I'm like, okay, if, that, if that's what I love to consume on YouTube, maybe I can like shrink it down yeah. and put it on TikTok and just see what happens. Girl, and you fucking And I made my first Get Ready Me on TikTok. No and means. after that, I think with that platform and the way that the algorithm works, I got a whole new fan base. I have that whole, not, not Gen A, but like 
our fan base <laughs> is like, is our our age now. Yeah, yeah, they're our sure, age, sure, or if sure. not, they're like a little bit older. Yeah. So when I went to TikTok, I realized, oh, this sh- is Gen Z. Th- no, like. this is Gen. This is Gen. This is Gen <laughs> Alpha and a little Gen Z. Like yeah. these are people that I have the never. comments I've never seen before, and I no. think dealing with that on TikTok, people treated me like a new character. They did. They were like, who's this suede girl? When in reality, I've get, been doing it for a, for long, a long time. time. And they get, I feel like the new generation, especially TikTok, Super dope so, though. Super cool. Super cool, but they get so obsessed with every obsessed. single little detail, what's going on. And it's like, they want, like, it's like a whole new, like, hunger Please of seeing like- seeing these kids in Sephora, I'm like, girl, it's, it's a whole different breed It's a now. whole new ballpark that we're just not used to. I just think- TikTok has made it very accessible for anyone to become an influencer and for anyone to gain a following, fo- period. A following, which I think is good. But I think at the end of the day, when you actually realistically look at it, the hardest platform to grow on will always be YouTube. And that's where you will always get like a real fan base. And it's, Absolutely. And I, I think that's what's, I think YouTube is the most credible app. It is. Out of all of them. Like, I feel like it's, YouTube I think is never I'm going to eventually go back to my YouTube. I've, I've taken a break for a long time yeah. just because I'm trying to see what I want to do next with your life with my platforms i want to do good you know i yeah. want to help people and i i think that's i've gone through a lot of trauma and stuff in my life that i feel like i haven't really been open or haven't had a place to share it i think whenever we go through traumatic things in our personal life it's kind of hard to try to be ourselves and to be present and to act like everything's okay i feel like back then i used to be so good at pretending and this and that but the older right. that i get it's like i don't want to have to pretend i don't want to have to force a video no. i don't want to go on youtube because they catch it too they like do. our fan base like they know us yeah they, like as much as we don't think they do we yeah. with our personalities and how we share on the internet yeah they as can much tell. as we want to think that we can like mask and be like oh yeah they know they don't know i'm having yeah. a bad day babe they see they it know. and like I've yeah. kind of learned that over the past like few years, just even making consistent TikTok content. Yeah. Like your fan base knows what's good. Please. I remember when you got your first Savage Fenty deal and I was like, <laughs> dude, Daisy, this is like game. It was major. Game. No, babe. But like, you know what was major when I saw your skims like, campaign? Oh. I was like, oh, this is big. That campaign was sick. Babe, but I think like just seeing when my friends like accomplish things like that, I, I get it's, so, babe. It's I get so excited. Dope. I get it so excited. So I'm like, dope. oh my god. But you know what? I, and it's especially when it's somebody you really co-sign, like somebody like, that you damn. really like. Every like, time you see, you're like, I love you. I I'll be there for you no matter what. And they put like, something damn, dope. I'm like, this bitch got it. Like fucking. That's fire. a girl's like, girl, babe. It. We're I know, girls, girls, girls. <laughs> and I love that about us. No um, facts. I and I love that we're here now and babe straight up 10 years later like (laughs) what's good we're like we're here now we're a little older nothing's changed um you just turned 20 I just turned 23 I think that is so crazy though sweet because I feel like you're so mature beyond your age like I feel like you have so much wisdom and I feel like because you have gone through a lot I wanted to ask you genuinely how are you mentally how have you been feeling like realistically how has your life been I mean, my life's been kind of hectic the past few years. I've gone through a lot of trauma, not o- not on the internet, but also in, in my personal life. Do you want to open? Of up course, about it? I think. I mean, we can start. I mean, I also want to an- like I want to answer questions and people like I know there's things on the internet that I see that I also want to answer because I yeah. think they're genuinely curious, yeah. not for like a weird reason. I think they just genuinely want to know care and they just yeah what like, I've been up to on. the yeah. past few years. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't, please, I don't know where to start. I mean, I was living in New York. Yeah. You know that I was living in New York for about a year. I loved Mm -hmm. it. Best city in the world. I think you thrive there. I don't thrive there. Thank you so much. (laughs) I think I'm going to go back. I always say I'm going to leave Los Angeles. I've been here for seven years and I haven't left. I mean, I've left, but I always come back. Like this, I think this will always be home for me. Yeah. But yeah, I lived in New York for about a year. Mm -hmm. Best city in the world. Yeah. I'll definitely go back. <laughs> um, I was in a relationship, my first ever boyfriend that I ever had. And it was public. And it was public, yeah. which was very interesting because it was, it was very new. I had met him in Utah with a mutual friend mm-hmm. and we didn't spend a day apart. And it was like, he was my built, he was like my best friend. Mm-hmm. And I think at that age, at 19, I had nothing, I had nothing like, not going for me, but I was like, I might as well move to New York. I have nothing holding yeah. me back. My yeah. family's healthy. My family's happy in Vegas. You're I'll go to New York. Good, I love like, New York. Yeah. I think everybody should live in New York 
at once in their life. <laughs> yeah. I always say this. I think it builds such amazing work ethic and there's so many things in New York that are positive. So I'm yeah. like, I'll go to New York. Yeah. Go to New York, stay for a year. The relationship didn't end up working out. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish him nothing but the best. Mm-hmm. I have, yeah, nothing but love. He's a great guy. Yeah. Um, but the internet took and ran with it they will take something and run with it and this, make their own and assumptions th- I think this is, yeah, yes babe i think this is the first time i had ever even showed a boy like let any boy on my social media first off yeah and there was also like a lot of drugs in our relationship mm-hmm. which i think played a huge factor okay um i never did drugs mm-hmm. I never liked them. Mm-hmm. I was always the marijuana girl. You never even and drank, okay? We yeah. would go out to let's, parties yeah, and it's like, like Sway doesn't even there. drink. Exactly. Yeah, I've no. never really been a big drinker. I've always kind of been scared of hard liquor. Yeah. So I've always just been like the pothead of the group. You've been the chill one. Yeah, babe. Yeah, like no, I'm literally. just in the corner with the joint, yeah. like yeah. killing it, thriving. And when I was in this relationship, I got introduced to Xanax mm-hmm. and... Xanax is like marijuana on crack, babe. It is. Like, if you want to escape from something, if you want to go away somewhere, you... You do that, babe. There. Yeah. And that'll, that'll do it. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you. And yeah. I think dabbling with that at that age, mm-hmm. um, it caused a lot of trauma in the relationship, which it can is be very sad. dangerous. Of course. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. awful. Especially when it's like, um, you're both doing it. Yeah. Like, that's a... <laughs> that's a recipe for disaster right there that's what i'm saying like it's dangerous in that sense and that's that, like, what yeah. happened and i think the drugs got crazy and mm-hmm. um one thing led to another i i moved home back to vegas with my family and i healed for about two years that's good though. which was great and i think i'm still healing i mean yeah. um Every day we're evolving, we're healing, yeah. we're maturing. Like you're not this, you literally are changing every single every second, day. Every, every day, day you have to wake up and choose to have a good day. Like yeah. I always say that to myself, just give yourself a chance. Like, yeah, as long as I you tried your best that right. day, that's all that counts. Even if you didn't try your best, even if you're just trying to like literally give yourself a chance, like yeah. wake up, do your deeds and At keep least- it pushing, babe. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I lived in New York. I came back to Vegas for about a year and a half. Yeah. And I, that was when I went on my European summer vacation. That was like my first kind of big one you I were, ever did. <laughs> you were out there. I was like, she's never coming back. <laughs> she's never coming back so, yeah, to America. She's in Europe. I was living she's through your gone. content. We though. lost her. <laughs> I was living through your content, though. I was like looking forward to your pictures and oh, outfits. I'm, I'm glad you were living vicariously. <laughs> yeah, I was. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that was like kind of my first European summer, which I had ever. I'd never traveled like overseas. This is my first time going with a big friend group. I was, was super like back excited. To back to back. People, yeah, I was <sighs> during that. I was gone for three. I think I was gone for like three months, from June to August, just Amazing. bopping around and. Um, I'm in Mykonos. Mm -hmm. I'm with um, my best friend. Mm -hmm. We're sitting in my room. Mm -hmm. It's about 9 p.m. And I get a phone call from my mom. And she's like, sweetie, I need you to sit down. I'm like, yeah, I got you. Okay. I sit down. And she goes, daddy's gone. Mind you, I'm in Mykonos. She's got the chills. I know. It's brutal. Mind you, I'm in Mykonos. I don't have no family. I'm with one of my best friends, thank goodness. I'm in the room, I'm like, and it just hit me. And I was like, oh no. My adrenaline starts rushing, I, I run outside. This is the craziest part, is that like three months before that I was in Miami. Yeah. And I had these like crazy dreams, like vivid, weird dreams of like my father passing. And I had this, and then a week before I left for Europe, I'm sitting in my room upstairs in Vegas. Yeah. And I'm, I'm about to take a rip of my bong. This is like, I'm about to take a rip. And I'm thinking about, I've ne- by the way, I've never thought about this. This is the first time it's ever come to my mind. I wonder what it would be like to lose my father. Because my, mind you, my father has been gone the past year. He had been gone in Northern California in this place called Humboldt County. Mm-hmm. And it's like the most, it's, it's called Murder Mountain, basically. Yeah. And he was doing a lot of like weed work up there uh-huh. with like a big marijuana business. Mm-hmm. And people die left and right at that in that mountain. Really? It's very common. So I had that I had that vision, right? Yeah. A week before I leave to Europe. Yeah. I'm in Mykonos. I get the call and I had this feeling of like, oh my God, I called it. Not I called it, but like, like you saw it coming. I and saw it, and it, it and it's like I was almost like it didn't hit me as hard it was like, because I felt it almost already because he had been gone and I hadn't seen him. 
you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I get the call and I'm like, oh, f- like, this is bad. Obviously, my first instinct is calling my siblings, making yeah. sure that they're safe and they're okay, that they're home, that yeah. this, that, the third. I'm in Mykonos. The time difference is like, mind you, it's like 10 hours. Yeah. So I'm trying to find a flight home from Mykonos. There's no flights out of Mykonos. I have to take a helicopter from Mykonos to um, like Spain. I, yeah, I went from Mykonos to Spain. I took a helicopter and then flew from Spain, had a layover. It took me like 10 and a half hours to get home. I finally made it home with my family. And I think mourning has been the hardest, hardest. thing I've ever gone through. I like, babe, I lost my best friend. Yeah. Like. I was a daddy's girl. That was my right hand. He was in all my YouTube videos. My fan base loved him. I, my fam, like, it was like, oh my God, I lost a chunk. Not even I lost my father. I lost like my my brother. Like the, he was my best friend. So I think like dealing with that and also having to be there with my family and be, and be the strong one. Yeah. Well, it was brutal. Like to keep it I, I never lost a down. close, I've never lost like a close loved one. I've never lost like yeah. anybody immediate in my life. Um, my, my dad's, my dad's mother is still alive. Damn. So, and I also like, that was another brutal thing. It's like, you should never bury your kid. I think that is like, my, I feel like worse for my yeah. grandma than anybody in this situation. But getting that call when you are helpless in Mykonos, when you can't touch or feel any of your family members in that moment. When you're like so far babe, away. Babe, it changed my life. Like this situation, it changed my life for the better because I see him and feel him all the time. Like when he passed for the last, like I think for th- three months after that, mm-hmm babe, these dreams, he was right here. I don't see, I don't really see faces in my dreams, like, ever. Like, I feel like like all my dreams are kind of, like, dude, I'm not kidding you. Like, so realistic. And it was happening to to me, my whole family, and um, the neighbors, the neighbors that both, yes, yes. And I think when my father, when my father passed, I'm so much closer with my grandmother now. I'm so much closer with my dad's sister. Like I, I hug my dad's sister, my dad's um, younger sister. Mm -hmm. And it like, you feel him. So as long as I have those moments and I cherish those moments, like that's all that matters. And I know he's in a better place. He was the healthiest, um, happiest most badass motherfucker you'll ever meet um he surfed he skated he wakeboarded he um he died abruptly of a heart attack he had had never had heart issues ever in his life he was healthy never had any health issues um that is so was a very healthy man and has never had like we've never heard of any heart issues ever he's never talked about it even with my mother like it was never we didn't know and yeah, he was up there. I think things just got a little stressful with the weed company. Something, something happened, something and went wrong. and I think he he really missed his children. Like we did, I didn't see him for like a year and a half, yeah. and it was hard. But I was also in a relationship in New York City, fashion you were week. Also, like living your living life, my and life to get to exactly, know and like absolutely. And I think. Um, it, it was definitely the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. I think about him every day. Um, I think he'll forever be with me. Yeah. It was something that when it happened, I went ghost on the internet because I did not know how to mourn a loss of yeah, that. Of course, especially your parent. Like, I think that is the most, I think that's something that I think that is my biggest fear. I've talked about it, it before. It is. I don't know what, sweet. I literally don't know. My mom is my best friend. I'm an only I child. Know. Like, if I were to lose my mom, I don't know what I would do. And that is my biggest fear. So I'm, yeah, I'm so sorry for too. your loss. No, like, it really I'm, is. I'm just kind of like, I don't know how I would deal with it. So I just want to say that you're so strong. Thank you're so you. brave for opening up about it. You didn't have to come on here and open up about it. You know, it's something very yeah, personal. But I think as and, long as I can help somebody, like, that's what I'm here for. I think everybody grieves in a different way. Yeah. But losing a parent, especially like my parents had me older. My mom had me at 40. So like my mom is already getting up there. Yeah. And even seeing it, like seeing a wrinkle on my mom's face, I You're just, like, oh babe, I will scream cry. Like <laughs> anybody watching this straight up, go hug your parents. No, like for real. after this know. situation, it made me realize 
because I didn't, I moved out at 15 years old. Yeah. I left my family. I was like, I'm about to do this YouTube thing. Like, bye, toodles. Not, I'll yeah. see you. I'll see you in 10 years, like yeah. here and there. And I didn't really pay, like pay much or time or attention to my family, my siblings. Yeah. Once this happened, it made me realize how fragile and special your family is to you. Yeah, like, like your blood, babes. Like it's, go it's, call your mom and hug your mom because one day you they're don't gonna know. be gone and, and it's, it is inevitable it happens it is yeah but that's what's scary is but that it it's inevitable happen, and it can, but it's a ticking time bomb it can happen at any time at any second you know when I was living in LA my the last thing on my mind was my family unfortunately yep. because I was like right. I was just focusing on what was in front of me, this, 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 right. this, this, that. And I'm trying to further my career and be more successful. And I lost sight of what was actually important. And it wasn't until I lost myself. And, and then I tried to take my own life where like everything yep. hit the fan. And I was like, who was there for Dude. me? And it was my family. And I was like, oh my God. So that's why I moved back to Texas. Because and that's, that's what you need. Like it is. Babe, it's what when you need. you're able to like live, live there, live a happy, healthy, amazing life, like, and you're able to buy property there and have family there and have, I mean, I know your family's big. I know, I'm sure you have a bunch of cousins. Yeah. yeah you don't have si- you don't have siblings, correct? I have half siblings. Okay. So same father. Same father, different moms. Okay. So we all have different moms. But okay. And I'm they're still, all in Texas? Texas, California. Like, okay. But I'm, I'm close to them. Um, but it's nice because you're able to tap into nice. LA when you need yeah, yeah, to. Yeah. Be able to how, 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 what's the it's flight? It's a three hour three flight. Hour That's flight? like... Quick. I was like, I'm staying in Dallas. I really genuinely... Because you were living in Hollywood, right? Yeah, I was living in Hollywood. Yeah. And like, I got so consumed with the lifestyle mm-hmm. and the partying and the people. Babe, and this like place will suck you up it and will. spit you it out. It will. It will. And it did and for it a did. while. It right. literally said, yum, Straight yum, up. throw this bitch out. And um, I'm very thankful that I was able to go back to Texas and my family was there. I was able to reroute myself. I was best able thing. to grow. Best thing you ever did. Heal. It was the best thing I ever did. And... You know, I'm forever thankful that my family was still there with open arms. And I've just, I've completely changed my mindset. My Absolutely. priority is my family, my parents. Like, that's just what, even in a relationship and that's what now. that's fulfills you, babe. If it that's is. what fulfills you it and is. makes you happy and mm-hmm. makes you feel whole, you need to yeah. do that. Yeah. This place, there is no, fu- there is no real fulfillment unless yeah. you have those things. Yeah. That's why I go back to Vegas. Like, I plan on ending up buying a house in vegas raising just a having some vegas. type of stability and the i love genuinely i love that i can come into the chaos and, and go to miami out. and new york and like have the balance of coming back to texas where i have my home my family right. you know, and like yeah and i'm think, literally the exact same with vegas like when i go home i'm like <sighs> i'm like mom will you make me some pancakes and and i'm not trying to say that like la is this horrible place no it's, not it's at not all. it's a beautiful place i just think that it's very easy to get lost yes. in a place that's so big and has Especially so much your to career. offer like exactly like this place there's always something it's going like, on there's it's always like, something fun to it's do. literally like a playground but right. it's like the devil's playground where like it really is it is and it's like if you don't tap into those angels every once in a while, you're yeah, toast. you for sure are like not gonna make it out. Yeah, it's it's a very Straight up. it's a difficult place and it is a very sunny place, but with some shady people. But it's like, Babe, as, it's, but it's funny because like I said, I I always say I'm gonna leave, and I always come back here. I, it's honestly I think we'll though, but always be coming back. But that's how, that's what I also was saying because I was talking to the Uber driver and he's like, oh, like do you live here? And I was like, no, I lived here for a very long time. I was like, but I always come here for work. And I was like, even if I don't come here for work, I'm always coming here. All my friends, honestly though, I think about it and like all my friends are here because I graduated high school, and moved straight here. I didn't Exa- really same. Like, I was 15 when I moved here. Yeah, so it's like I all had of my our- 16th birthday at One Oak. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like straight wait, up. I was like your birthday. You remember yes, that? Babe. It was at the Red Room. Exactly. Wait, was it at the Red Room? Exactly. Sweet. Crazy. First of all, I've lived so many lives. I know. I, I literally went down to. I didn't even know there was a red room at that club. Okay. Oh yeah. So yeah, it was like brand new at the time. Yeah. I, yeah. They were like, oh yeah. Who was I with? Oh, I don't want to talk about who I was with. But I was right. with somebody. And we went down there like it's Swade's birthday. And I was like Swade, and I look like, and I think you were with Ari. I don't yeah. Know who you were with and that was my twenty. Uh, that was my twenty first birthday. It was your twenty first. Yes, that was my twenty oh first. And then I had my yeah, I had my seventeenth at One Oak as well. But yeah, like like same same thing though. I moved here at that age. Like I didn't go to high school. Like I did online school. So Damn. I was like, okay, the only way I'm gonna like grow friends and have friends is if I move here. And I've yeah. I've had these same friends since I've moved here. It's, that's the thing. Like every time my 
And in Dallas, though, when I'm there, I, I have to come. By the way, I want to come. To I want to take it to the stockyards. I want Please, you to have like your cowgirl fantasy, exactly. cowboy boots. Miss Bella Hadid loves it there. Babe, so it's straight like, up. Also, her man's is so fire. I'm yeah, like, he's okay. there. He's there. Um, with the hard cutting the bowls. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, cowboys are. I think. It. I think cowboys are the are the vibe oh, this year. Highly agreed. Oh my god, me and country music. You, you would never think it because all I really play in my videos are like future and like yeah, you music, play nothing but like rap, but like music. Morgan Wallen. <laughs> if you're watching, babe, I want to say thank you for opening up and being vulnerable and talking Absolutely. about passing again. I'm so thank sorry you. for that. Like no, for real, it definitely gives me a lot of insight, and I feel like it makes me, it makes me feel safe knowing that I can you know if i ever do go through you that or like if anything i'm here you know that i have Straight a friend up. that i can confide in and just find comfort in and i feel Absolutely. like you're that person i think even when ricky lost his father like he's happier he's in a, yeah, better, he's place. In a better place and he's also, always going to be with you like i think about my dad like getting older and not being able to like get on a surfboard i think that would break my heart more than mm -hmm. him passing the way he did. If I had to see my father in a wheelchair, not being able to do the things that or he loved, not being able to get on a skateboard, or not being able to like hit a ramp, dude, I don't know what I would do. Like that would hurt me ten times more. Damn. So I think the way that he left he was lived so his life peaceful and, like, yeah. and ha like not happy, but he, I know that he was okay. Yeah, and not in pain. Yeah, and that's what like honestly gives you a little bit of closure. And Absolutely, like, okay. you know. Yeah. <sighs> That hey, was, by now, that was right? hard and that was deep. And I'm so thankful that I had that conversation with you. And Always. That you're here. <sighs> I okay. love being able to open up to you, for real. Like, Thank you. Let's, my let's girl, to that. you're my twin <laughs> of them. My daisy girl. Also, love your name, by the way. I love your name. It's Suede Brooks. My Suede okay, Brooks. so I used to hate my name. What? Yeah, I used to hate it. I think your name is so dope. I have a brother named Blaze <laughs> and a sister <laughs> named India. Oh. So we all have, like, pretty crazy names. Yeah. Um, that's, I think it's so annoying Suede because is just such a like sexy cool so I like, hated it because Suede. people couldn't know how to pronounce it in middle school like in middle school and like they were like Sudi Su and I'm like <laughs> girl but my name, my name came from a shampoo bottle my parents they own a hair salon in Vegas they had oh, a came big from shipment Suede. Baby, they had a big that's shipment. so cool, it was cool. Though. It was I love dope. that I it love was like a big shipment of shampoo <laughs> and the, the shampoo was called Suede Lux oh. and they were like Suede Brooks that's Period. It. You yeah. know what my name was supposed to be Margarita? Shut up. <laughs> wait, you know, yesterday was National Margarita Day. I had a, I had a dirty my bar. Friend just told me, oh, wait, no, I'm lying. Wait, wait, you guys. No, wait, wait. Wait, love I, Margarita. Wait, no, Daisy in Spanish. Daisy in Spanish means Margarita or something like that. Is it? Wait, wait, yes. But That's no. That's funny. Wait, something like that. But my name was actually supposed to be Mercedes. Cute. My dad's name. Mercedes too, my right? dad's name is. Well, I crashed it, but. <laughs> My Mercedes no, is gone. No, tell me Total. everything. Why? Well, you had one job, girl. Come no. On. Well, it's because I was jamming out and there was this right. huge speed bump. Oh, no. That got in my way. Yeah, with that C-class, your toes, And I just babe. fucking went, psh, and I jumped, and the whole engine collapsed, and the whole roof sank. Like, I, there was no way of moving it, and they were like, it's going to take more money to fix it than... Yeah. Get so I was like, it. okay. So then I had bought a Bentley. The Bentayga? What'd you get? I bought myself a no, Bentley. No, you didn't and it only lasted me a month and Happens. i'm not surprised somebody crashed me it wasn't me actually somebody crashed me i Girl, i had just gotten it stop i'll scream cry not i don't know Bentayga, i don't babe. know i don't know what the actual i just went oh. in i saw it i was like she's That's beautiful it. and i was like i'm getting it. i didn't know shit about cars it lasted you a month and so you have a month and a half what happened? i don't know what it was honestly i was at a red light and this right? guy just, just fully came. hit me from the back i still don't have my car I still don't have it. I got it for my birthday in September. Girl. Still don't have it. I know, but it's fine. I, it's okay. It happens. It's okay. It's okay. It Life happens. happens. Babe, it happens. You know, I'm like, if anyone out there wants to buy me a new car. Yeah, if anybody has an extra <laughs> Benteg on the line, let me know. But, Miss Suede Brooks. Okay. What is, uh, your, what is your love life looking like now? Okay, so I'm single. Okay. I've been single. I feel like your life is just so exciting though. Ah! Like your love life must be crazy. so exciting. Like I just want to know like I just okay, want to know. Okay, you want to know what's crazy what? is like I'm literally so celibate. Like I don't Really? I'm like so single right now. Well, I, I think, am so single as well. Yeah, like, like I don't have time especially in LA. I do not have time for these men. Like I No, honestly, the men here are just it's not It's brutal. No. Like I ha obviously I have my flings. I have my foot. You guys have yeah. probably seen some on the internet, I'm <laughs> sure, which is so embarrassing. 
Uh, I've seen some of them. Sometimes my digital p- footprint, I'm like, oh no, oh no, oh no. They <laughs> I kind of like your digital footprint. I'm like, they got me in San Tropez. <laughs> No, um, I have fun. I mean, I'm so focused on my career yeah. and what I'm doing when I don't, it's already hard taking care of myself, babe. Yeah. Like taking care of a whole nother human being and just is having ju- like, and just it's having a lot. That. Mm-hmm. Like I was in, I've had like a few flings here and there, mm-hmm. but like, honestly, like anything serious, like your last relationship. No, 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 okay. that's no, not at all. Dating is very interesting, especially when it's like you're being watched. Yes. Because I, it's like you never know when someone is like. And I always like, go for like, I don't know. I you always like go my, for the people that are out there already? Yes. Um, I almost go and like I, I kind of want it next time. Like I tried going out with this like low key, not kid, but like he was younger <laughs> than me. I've never dated anybody okay. younger than me. And dating somebody of that age, you realize like, oh my God, women are so much more mature. Like they have so much, they need so much more time to cook, man. No, like it's like insane though. But like, you know what's so crazy though? Because I have literally, I have talked to men that are younger than me and I've talked to men that are older than me. Extremely insane. And then I'm just like, how are you and they're the 10, same. 20 years older than me and you're literally acting like this 20 year old 21 year old guy that i'm talking it's to it's ridiculous. like it's just like what like and i feel like my type goes like me too i feel like i don't either. have a type if i vibe with you i think for me it's more, more personality. personality like yeah, if yeah, you too, make me, too, me laugh me like my ex made me i think that's why the reason i was so attracted to him is because he made me, made laugh. me laugh and it's hard to make it's hard to make me laugh like I feel like I have such a dry personality. No, sweet. I kid you, you know? not though. Wait, no, I know. Because like there was this one time where I was like chilling at a party somewhere. And I was, I think I was just like high out of my mind. I'm just like chilling. And I see you walking and I was like, oh my God, if I used to know suede, I would think she was the most intimidating really? like person ever. You walking like so like you, I don't know how to explain, but you walk with like this. And I was like, damn, I was like, I just love her. But I was just admiring from far, but I was like, if I didn't know her, I would be intimidated. Really? Yeah. That's so interesting. I think it's just because you don't laugh and you don't open up right away. But it's like, but the people that know you, it's like you're a vibe. I'm the warmest like, girl. Yeah, yeah, I'm the yeah warmest, for sure. Like, I'm the mom of everyone. But that's what sure. I'm saying. Like, you're such a mystery. I think it's the height. I think it's like, oh, your height, foot. babe. No, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. That'll do it, babe. But, but that I, alone. But, but you walk into a room and you own it. And I love that. Thank and you. like, I think I just, it took a lot of like um, inner work. Honestly. Yeah, for sure. I, I know the number one like compliment I always get is my posture and it's something that I've oh, worked on. Bitch, no, your posture's you right now. I'm like this and say it's like But I'm it's, like, no, it's funny because I used to have like a hunchback when I was in middle school and I was like I was five foot nine in like sixth grade, which is giant, by the yeah. way. For for that age, five and nine so I would, very babe, I would hunch over to be the size of everybody else. Mm-hmm. And my and then one day I got a back brace. And I'm not kidding oh. you. This back brace changed my life. And like, I think not only physically it helped me, but when you have that like inner confidence on top of the back brace, nobody babe, can take that away from you. Forget about it. <laughs> nobody can, nobody take, that can a- take it away. I think it's so beautiful. I Everybody can have confidence. So everybody can own it and have it. And you can't buy you confidence. You have to learn it. Exactly. Like you, and you have to you, like yourself. adapt it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because you can be the wealthiest guy on earth and have no confidence and it's like you can't buy that no you, you can't, can't buy that you i also just, think it's who you surround yourself with like you, you need just to have be to around own confident it people. especially especially girls girls that hype you up and you're like you yeah. look at it and don't try to make you feel less feel don't weird. try to like, like yeah exactly okay i think in la it's it's very Everyone's like comparing. common to be like why is she wearing that oh why is she walking like that and it's like I don't know. I think I just think differently. You think differently. I'm, I'm just such a good... I LA, literally... The LA thing is just very judgmental. It's very... It is. Um, it's very like... It's very... Um, sh- like not show, show, show. Honestly, not as bad as like Miami. Because I think my... But also Miami, like they're real there. My, LA, it's like kind of cap. Like, I you don't like, really know no, who's... I feel like Miami is like real, real money. You know? No, yeah. I... I that's I don't think trip. so. I think Miami is like real, real. Like I have a fucking yacht. I come on my fucking come, yacht, they and it's like come from Colombia, straight up. No, but it is true. But you know what? I'm actually so excited to go to Miami. And just kind of experience just for a month. Babe, I think you need see. it. Okay, so when I was, I like I said, I was telling mm-hmm. you I lived there. Mm-hmm. So when I was living in New York, we'd spend time like back and forth in Miami and mm-hmm. New York. Miami is such a great lifestyle. It is. It's healthy. You're right by the water. The water's beautiful there. Everyone works the water, out there. I yeah. swear to God. Everybody's everybody healthy. Everybody just like, yeah. It's a whole and different. And like, the, I just think the lifestyle there is great. The weather's great. Yeah. I think you're also super close to New York. 
I'm sure you work in New York all the time. It's literally right there. You're also cl- how close from Dallas? It's only it's I'm right in between L.A., New yeah, York, it's, and Miami. Right there. It's just like Texas is like the best Dude, spot I for everything. Texas is like literally its own nation over like, there. It is. Everything is bigger in Texas, honestly. No, straight up. I heard <laughs> that they do like a like a vote every year if it wants to be like its own country. Like Texas is so big that it could literally be its like. But it is. It, it honestly is so fun. Here you like go an hour and you've already passed like so many different yeah. places no in texas in order for me to see my sisters i have to drive almost four hours which is houston dallas from houston is Dude. four hours driving which is like and i drive that's every vegas to la and i do that drive all the time yeah like, you yeah, see like brutal, vegas though. to la is a whole different yeah. place no four hours you're barely like you're, in another- <laughs> you're literally like you're still in the <laughs> yeah state. you're still in texas <laughs> which is like fuck what made you go to texas like what was why well texas? because my family lives there so okay. me living here i lived here for so they did they migrate from mexico mexico yeah. to texas yeah or some, did they go somewhere before no no no. they're uh, my family's everywhere i have okay. family in chicago i have family in california okay i have nice. family in texas i have an aunt here but she lives in oxnard so when i okay. was living in hollywood it was like it's up when i was it's with my there. high school sweetheart at the time like it would make the drive not so lonely but when i right. was by myself i was like i don't want to drive all the way over there by myself and have to drive of course it's brutal i don't know it was just like a me thing but um when i moved back I wanted to move back because when I was, I still had my apartment here in LA yeah. and then COVID hit and I was living with my mom for like a couple months and she's like, why don't you just buy a house here? So smart. She's like, there's nothing Smartest going on. Thing she ever said. And I was like, you know what? You're right. You're so right. So right. then I bought a house and then I paid it off and then now I was getting this rent money and she's like, she's like, why don't you use that rent money to buy another house? So then it, 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 that just kind of how I got into like the real estate. Incredible. And babe. so now I have a couple of houses, which That's is beautiful. That's so major. I it's, love it. I Thank love, you so much. I'm sure much. it's a lot of work though. Well, my mom really helps me out with it. Good. She really, really helps me manage the houses. And nice. um, she really plays a big Keep part it in, in the that. blood. Yes. Yes, for sure. Okay. So now that we're ending the podcast, I want to, I want to do this little segment on my podcast where we go on your Instagram and I go on a picture and I ask you, what were you doing and where were you at? Oh, I love this. I First of all, you're... This, I'm, a good, I'm a good contestant for that too. I, I know, like. literally. I had screenshotted some pictures, but I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to... Babe, just, yeah, raw dog it. You, <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. I'm like, there's so much. Explain this picture. Heard you needed some inspiration. <gasps> okay, so that's kind of a major photo. I was in Saudi Arabia oh and I was at this place called Alula. Alula? My friend Oliver Ripley, he has okay. a hotel there called Alula. We should go once we get married. Okay, yes, we'll <laughs> go there once I get married. <laughs> once we get married, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's called Alula, and it's in Saudi Arabia. It's in uh-huh. Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And I went for the Red Sea Film Festival. It yeah. was me, Chantal Jeffries, and Niels. Okay. And we all went together, and it was so, so much, much fun. fun. We spent like two <sighs> weeks in Saudi Arabia. It was dope. Saudi Arabia is okay. When I landed in Saudi Arabia, I realized like. When I realized how far I was from home, you were like, "Oh shit, babe!" I had a full mental break. I was like, "Oh my god, I I don't know how I'm gonna get home. I'm so far." Like you realize when you look when you look on maps, yeah, from like your current location to where you were far, baby girl, babe. I was far. You were far. Okay, but I kind of lived for a little far moment. Kind of like You're language always barrier. Everywhere. Kind You're of like always the vibes. Yeah. I love just being in a strange place. Same. With like, where nobody knows Babe, my name. Babe, it's the only, I was just talking to my friend about this last night. It's the only thing that stimulates me now. Like traveling. Going somewhere where nobody knows pets. your name and just like. It's the only thing that, stim- it's the only thing that like gets me like. Going. Going. Excited. Yeah, snatched. Like, you Kay. know, I don't know. This next one. I literally bought this outfit when I saw you post this picture. Daisy, back in the stop. best city Don't in the make world me nervous okay oh my goodness no okay, wait so this picture is sickening that is so funny you say that because Why? that was in new york city uh-huh. and that was right when my get ready with me had popped off well if, re- if you look at the comments like that was like the that was the time well, i just want to say thank you so much Are you for me? coming on here thank you babe thank you for being vulnerable and opening up and just being a girl's girl and just being such a beautiful woman of course, all in general i'm so honored you can come back whenever whenever you feel like just we can literally just be drinking wine again and just talking about up. like in a month so much will happen in our lives that at this point at this point anything can happen before we end it i'm curious about your love life because no so we, will, we will save that for Should another episode, for, the next episode? <laughs> for the next episode yes we will okay but i love you so much and i love thank you so, so much, much for coming thank you baby. cheers for real both my girl my twin and them for <laughs> my life girl, girl.
for life. Yeah, also, like, love. She's got the wine on deck. She's got the softbox lighting, the three cameras. Okay, the whole Daisy team over Diaries there. is on production <laughs> mode. We love Daisy Diaries. and For we real, will- Daisy Diaries forever. Forever, girl. Straight up. We will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye, ladies. Toodles. <laughs>